Hi, this is Ed Kohler with Extreme Networks, and I want to talk with you today about a unique innovation called integrated application hosting and a specific solution implementation called service level encryption on Fabric Connect. But before we begin, I want to give thanks to two good friends and colleagues, uh, Scott Fincher and Marian Stoika, who helped me co-develop this solution without whose contribution this project, quite frankly, would have been possible. I also want to reach out to the uh, integrated application hosting team headed up by Steve Smith, a good buddy of mine, as well as another good buddy supporting uh, Lou Schmidt. Thanks, guys. You made this possible. First of all, what is integrated application hosting? Well, in essence, it's a, uh, a hypervisor environment that can run on specific extreme networks switching platforms, leveraging a multi-core silicon and actually to provide functionality not only for extreme networks and things such as analytics engines and things of that nature, but also third-party virtual machines as well. These platforms have extra RAM and CPU power to run guest virtual machines along with the Switch OS and the Switch OS gated away so there is no compromise. The presencing of the guest VM does not affect the normal operation of the switch and the routing and everything else. It, it's fairly and securely gated so the guest VMs can peacefully coexist on the same platform without worrying about switching resources and things of that nature. So it's a well-engineered approach. So basically, how this works is we can see that the Switch OS also has a, a KVM hypervisor, and on top of that, we can set guest VMs. And uh, we use basically uh, sideband ports to get in and out of this environment. And I want to emphasize that the sideband port bandwidth is dependent on the switch models being used. We're going to focus a lot on the 7400-32C in this uh, this presentation, uh, but this basic architecture stays the same regardless of the platforms or the OS. Um, the virtual machine processes the traffic uh, and uh, based on the application and then returns the traffic. So in the case of a firewall or in the case of, a, as we can see, a Docker type container. Uh, but then also we can do mirroring as well. So a great example is uh, on the far right hand side where we see Wireshark as a guest VM, the ability to mirror traffic to that uh, so that we can actually uh, uh, monitor what's going on. Now, the virtual machine can be accessed via the management channel or a console uh, connection provided by the KVM hypervisor. We'll talk about the particular details of this solution very shortly. So the concept is fairly simple. It's basically a hypervisor within our switching architecture. Now, what I want to talk about is a specific implementation that we did, and this presentation will outline the research and development as well as the value proposition and use cases for this particular technology solution. The company that we're using as the guest VM is Senatus, uh, and uh, we're going to start with a brief introduction of that company and its technology offerings. We will then illustrate modes of operation as well as value statements, and I think by the end you'll see that this is a very flexible software-based high-speed encryption engine that can be used in qualified integrated application hosting switching products. So a little background on Senatus. They are an Australian company. Uh, they specialize in high-speed government-certified layer 2 encryption, and they are very agile and nimble at it. They are best-in-class wire speed encryption up to 100 gigabits per second. I believe they are actually working on 400 gig now. Ultra-low latency, we'll have specifics on that. And they're used by governments, defense agencies, and, and large enterprise customers, particularly finance, uh, in more than 40 countries across the globe. Now, we've had a great relationship with this company for quite some time. As a matter of fact, we worked on something called ICID level encryption, which basically is service level encryption in these boxes, which is really their traditional market. This is the black box type scenario. This is basically a hardware root of trust, tamper proof enclosures, 
Um, the uh, uh, if you look at the, the portfolio offering and the certifications, uh, there is no doubt this is best in class in the industry. Now, these are hardware-based boxes. And when I say ICID level encryption, I mean that we went through the research and development in order for these boxes to sit directly in the Fabric Connect NNI. And uh, if you imagine a 100 gig trunk with one of these hardware encryption boxes in the middle, you could then selectively uh, decide which ICID you want to encrypt. But that's not what we're going to focus on here because this solution's been around for a while and we have many, many very, very secure networks that are run in combination with Fabric Connect and these hardware HSEs. But the real innovation is that Senatus has released a virtual HSE. And this is an industry first. And I'm not going to go through all the bullets, but it's based on basically the hardware platforms themselves, which means it is interoperable. If you have existing solutions using that, this will interoperate with it. Uh, it optimized performance, TPTK, uh, accelerated crypto offload, uh, both AESNI and QAT, uh, line rate up to 10 gigabits per second. And I, I want to emphasize that that's theoretical. Obviously, it's a hypervised environment, so it is platform in de or platform dependent. And, and, and I'll talk about specifics on that a little later on. Uh, zero touch provisioning and, and, and key management. So very easy to manage. Uh, and we've engineered out a very good, secure plane of management uh, that I, I, I think is very, very sophisticated. And, and I think you will, uh, you will find as well. And then also, this is a quantum resistant encryption method. Uh, and as we know, quantum computing has always been suspect, is starting to get to the point where many, many uh, codes are now starting to become breakable. Um, quantum resistance means that it uses things as crypto agility uh, and things of that nature. Now, uh, before we go further, let's look at the platform in question that we're focusing on, although I'll provide a list of the supported platforms at the end. We're going to kind of focus on the VSP 7432C uh, hardware architecture. The reason why I'm calling this out is that, first of all, two IAH sideband ports are required for the Senatus level encryption solution. So as you can see, we have two sideband ports here. Um, also, I want to emphasize that the performance of the encryption i.e. the throughput profile that you will be able to generate is directly related to the cores and the RAM uh, associated. It's like any other uh, type of container or virtual machine. Um, now, on this platform, we've been able to get very close to the theoretical limits of the actual container device, and we'll talk about the specifics of that towards the end of the presentation. But this is just kind of a hardware-based uh, view of what we're sitting on. If we look at the Senatus CD1000, it is basically a virtual machine with three interfaces, uh, ETH0, which provides uh, interface for management, uh, ETH1, which is the input, and ETH2, uh, which would be the output. And you may question, why would those be bi-directional arrows? Well, it's important because you realize that this is an encryption device. So both input and output transmit and receive data. Uh, but the important thing is the encryption process. From the input to the output is the process of encrypt. And from the output to the input, the process is to decrypt. And obviously, on the side where we are encrypting, would be the network side. So the output would always face towards the network and anything we're receiving from the network, we would then decrypt and provide. So this is basically a way that the platform works, the basic process. Now, if we look further, uh, the VM for Senatus basically sits on the, the hypervisor environment, the integrated application hosting environment, and we're going to utilize these sideband ports. And remember, we have a third port that we have to deal with, and we solve that by doing a virtual matching of the management 
interface in VLAN through the first sideband port. So the input and the management interface are coming in for, through the first sideband, and then the output is happening through the second sideband. So you can see the reasons why we need two sideband ports in order to really make this work effectively. A couple of things I want to point out here, though, is that we have a dual separation of management. Uh, we have a separated plane of interest for VOS management and management of the Fabric Connect environment. And then there's a secondary separate plane of management for the encryption engines themselves and the key management. And that I think is a very important and attractive security benefit to this solution. I also want to emphasize that uh, with this architecture, we are able to actually plumb a network to network interface, actually virtual network to network interfaces through the actual CB1000 virtual machine, thereby giving us ICID or service level encryption capabilities. So let's talk about the value propositions and use case because we were kind of done with the uh, overview from an R&D standpoint. Um, the first use case I want to talk about is MaxSec. MaxSec requires very specific hardware in order to be implemented. Uh, and a proper MaxSec design also requires MaxSec to be implemented end to end on every trunk. Um, in many instances, this is difficult, either from a timeline or a financial perspective. And uh, sometimes many customers may be scrambling against that. Additionally, in most instances, encryption is not required everywhere for every service. And if you choose with MaxSec, you really have to do it end to end. A great example is that most state and local governments require encryption for a limited set of services to certain limited locations. Examples would be PCI, HIPAA, criminal justice information, and certain other critical services, police logistics, things of that nature. ICID level encryption will allow for the termination of secure services only to the required endpoints, thereby drastically reducing the cost of the overall solution without compromising security postures or compliance. So here's a great example of where we have a, uh, a city, for instance, that may have 80 sites. And out of those 80 sites, uh, we see that only eight sites require uh, the support of encryption uh, for CGIS, PCI, or HIPAA. Uh, and so we see the three ICIDs uh, that contain the secure domains of interest. And uh, you can see that we have appropriate internet application hosting service nodes, i.e. in this case, we're talking about the BSP 7400s, but could be a BSP 4900. We'll talk about specifics. Uh, but the point is, is that now we have an encrypted services without the need to run MaxSec end to end. And, and, and let's say that a new location comes up and we need to support uh, an extension of PCI, for, ex for, for example, no problem. Uh, we just uh, uh, take an IAH capable node, we install the Senatus encryptor on it, uh, we include it into the key management domain of interest, and bang, uh, we have extended our security footprint at a very, very good economical cost. So this is the first use case example. And you might ask at this point, well, which would be the better approach, MaxSec or service level encryption? And the reality of it is, is that this solution is not intended to replace MaxSec. As a matter of fact, like all encryption capabilities, it should be viewed as complementary to MaxSec and actually could be used in an overlaid fashion. And we'll give examples of that. Um, service level encryption uh, is ideal for, for customers who do not require encryption everywhere, but only for a certain secure number of segments. But it can also be used to uh, work in tandem with MaxSec, for instance, to carry secure encrypted sessions and services out to remote branch locations um, that perhaps may not have the capability of, uh, of MaxSec, or perhaps it would be financially difficult to do so. Um, and also, it doesn't negate the use of the IPsec implementation within our XA series as well, because that is an area that you would use when fragmentation and reassembly is required. Now, the important thing to re remember here is that ICID level encryption, i.e. service level encryption, is a UNI service level function. So it's always performed at the Fabric Connect edge, which means it's clean to implement and very clear to understand. And in the next slide, we'll kind of illustrate that. So really, we can use both. 
we can use service level encryption as an extension of NACSEC. And this offers the ultimate in end-to-end -end flexibility to an encrypted domain. Uh, it allows secure service extensions off-site. It also can allow secure tenant enclaves. And then it could also provide secure MACSEC domain interconnections. And I'll talk about each of these use cases next. Use case number two is the extension of working with MACSEC and IPSEC to provide end-to-end -end encryption. So we can see that we have a series of MACSEC sites. And within those, uh, within those sites, we have some select nodes, which are IAH capable, and they are running the Sanitas encryptor. Uh, they are then encrypting ICIDs and then sourcing them out uh, into the service domain, out to non maxsec capable sites. And notice how now we have a secure end-to-end -end footprint of encrypted services. Notice that down below, this does not conflict with the XA series for the remote WAN branch sites. Uh, in the instances uh, where we need fragmentation and reassembly, we would use the IPsec solution on the XA series. Uh, where we have remote sites that do not require fragmentation or reassembly, we can use IAH capable nodes, BSP nodes, to actually terminate the ICIT capabilities outside of the secure MACSEC domain. So this becomes a great cost-effective way to provide an end-to-end -end secure footprint for the services that are required. Now, the other issue is that service level encryption can solve multi-tenancy encryption issues. When you look at many defense and federal agencies, as well as state and local governments increasingly, they have different departments and they require separate encryption practices. So in this type of environment, uh, MACSEC would be used to protect the overall network at the trunk level. And then each agency would be able to deploy separate service level encryption methods and practices to protect the specific services and sites of their interest level. In essence, service level encryption becomes nested into the MACSEC domain, thereby creating encrypted subdomains at the tenant level. And the best way to display this is with a diagram, of course. So here we have three different agencies, and we can see that they all share a common MACSEC secure domain, but they provide separation by different encrypted sets of ICIDs, and perhaps even di different key management practices as well. And this can all happen providing for very clean multi-tenancy where there's two separation and then o overall protection of the MACSEC secure domain itself. Now we can extend that to say that we can take secure MACSEC domains with service level encryption, and we can interconnect them now across vast distances if required. And this can either be done through Fabric Connect or Fabric Extend. And the encrypted ICIDs can basically provide interconnection between major sites over a provider network or over dark fiber or any type of infrastructure that does not require fragmentation or reassembly. Again, if we require fragmentation or reassembly, we would simply reach over and use the XA series to provide that end-to-end -end extension of the encrypted footprint. So we've had some questions. Uh, does this support multicast? The answer is yes, but there are some caveats. Uh, given the fact that this ICID level encryption needs to know what the ICID value is, we have to basically have some steps. Um, and fortunately, multicast provides a very good model for this. Uh, multicast is obviously a source-driven subscription delivery model. And let's use a video surveillance camera as an example. Uh, once the multicast source comes up, it, it does not change. It, let's say a video surveillance camera, it comes up, it will register with the Fabric Connect environment, and it will receive an ICID at that point. It will have an ICID assigned to it, and you will be able to know what that is through the database and through management tools. At that point, you can do explicit or ranges of encryption rules to say that this range or this explicit ICID should be encrypted. And obviously these values would all be greater than 16 million. Um, so as the sources are set up and registered into the fabric, 
the ISIS are established, uh, we can then set them uh, to filter for encryption. Uh, at this point, all subscriber receivers will need to be attached to Senatus enabled Insight Fabric. So this can be a bit of a loaded gun. You have to think about that. That's why I'm putting it above. Note any multicast ranges that are used by other solutions or tenants. You could, in essence, turn this on and then turn a bunch of folks off because they don't have the appropriate encrypted termination. Um, now, obviously, according to this, dynamic source applications, I, I don't want to, say, want to say will not be able to be supported, but they're going to be constrained very, very much so within ranges that you show. Uh, so we, we typically wouldn't advise the use of these in this scenario, but uh, typically, those applications or that type of behavior is not not commonly seen anymore and one could argue it's it's poor application practice or poor application behavior for multicast anyways so yes we do support it there are some caveats but i think once you see uh most of the sources that you could imagine ip television video surveillance cameras uh, vocera things of that nature could could very effectively come up uh register uh with a ICID, uh, once that ICID becomes resident, um, you could then set up a framework where every type of multicast termination would need to have the Senatus encryption and the service level encryption support. So in summary, uh, the Senatus CV1000 integration into the application hosting results in best of class high-speed encryption technology on the qualified extreme network switching platforms. Service level encryption allows for discrete selection of services. A great example well, you know, would be PCI, CGIS, and HIPAA. Obviously, they don't have to go everywhere, only to specific locations. Now, there are uh, currently supported integrated application hosting switching platforms. Uh, one is the VSP 7432C, which we've talked about in this presentation. I want to note that we were able to test out at 9.6 gigabits per second, which is damn close to the theoretical uh, uh, limit. And I want to emphasize that testbed was done with extreme networks in Senatus utilizing jumbo framing. And uh, Scotty Fincher uh, was uh, the one to host that. Now, we do have uh, the 4900 series, X series platforms as well. I do want to note that uh, that do not expect the same throughput numbers on these platforms. Uh, we're probably looking at sub five, uh, maybe even on the order of you know two to three, depending on the platform. So we'll have testing uh, once we're able to do so. Obviously, uh, due to current circumstances, we can't get those test beds in place. But once we have those numbers, we will follow up and provide some updates. Um, also remember that service level encryption does not negate MACSEC. It is complementary. It also does not negate the use of IPsec in the XA series. So, I, and I, I gave several examples, so I, I hope you see that as well. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this to be an exciting announcement. I know I am very excited. And I think that uh, due to the uh, customer proof of concepts, I think you will be too. Again, Stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, stay productive. This is Ed Kohler with Extreme Networks.